QuickBooks Online 2022 Credit Card Reconciliation Month Number One. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our bank feed practice file. We set up with a 30 day free trial, holding down control, scrolling up a bit to get to the one, two, five percent. We're currently in the home page, otherwise known as the get things done page, the business view as compared to the accounting view. You could change to the accounting view by going up to the cog up top, switch to the accounting view down below. We will be toggling back and forth between the two views, either here or by jumping to the sample company file currently in the accounting view. Back to the bank fee practice file. We're going to open up a couple tabs to put reports in by right clicking the tab up top and duplicating it. Back to the tab to the left, right click again and duplicate again. As that is thinking, we're going to jump on over to the sample company file to locate where the reports are located in the accountant view, which is on the left hand side under reports. If we go back on over to the business view in the bank fee practice file, second tab, we're then going to be in the business overview section and then in reports. Closing up the hand boogie, we're going to open up some report. What's it called again? What's that report? The balance sheet. I use it so rarely, sometimes I forget the name of it, but there it is. The 010121 to 12. Actually, let's cut this off as of 09. 30 to 1 because that's going to be our cutoff date for our first uh, account for the reconciliation of the credit cards let's run that as is and then actually let's do it this way now let's keep it there we're going to the tab to the right we'll go into the business overview and then we'll go into the reports again close up the hamburger and then go down to the profit and loss the p and l the income statement ranging in the changing 010121 09321 and run it okay so there we have the income statement let's go back to the first tab or the second tab we're going to do a bank reconciliation or a credit card reconciliation for the credit card now when you think about this reconciliation process you probably think of it first for the bank accounts but you could do a similar bank re reconciliation for the credit cards uh, many people don't think of it as much with the credit cards because the credit cards unlike the bank on the bank you still could have some outstanding transactions outstanding deposits and checks and many people will not be completely reliant on the bank to construct the the data within the system on the credit cards, many small businesses will basically be reliant on the financial institution to draw in all the data that we're gonna be using to construct our financial statements, balance sheet and income statement from the financial institution. Therefore, we're gonna not have any outstanding items like, like the outstanding transactions uh, in there uh, as readily, although the payment could still be kind of outstanding if we make the payment. So you could still want to do uh, the reconciliation for it, but so that's why people might so that means that the balance that's actually in your system is more likely to, to just tie out to the balance that's going to be on the bank statement even if you're not doing the reconciliation because there may not be any outstanding type of items except for that payment that you might be making but it's still a good process to do the bank reconciliation process and if you're in a company that is recording the transactions first like a full service bookkeeping system would even on the credit card side of things, many times small businesses don't do that because it's an electronic transfer, but uh, larger businesses are more likely to because then you have that internal control if you were to record it on your end and then verify it with the reconciliation could result then in some of those timing differences which you would want to have reconciliations for. Note that we have this negative number here. That's weird, right? Because that would mean that they owe us money. How did that happen? It happened in part because we didn't put the beginning balance in place into the system. That's the same problem we're gonna see with the bank statements. We'll do it on the bank statements as well. But when you first put the information into the system, then we have to put the detail into the system. QuickBooks is not the type of software that's just gonna pick up the ending balance because then you don't get the detail. You don't get the income statement. QuickBooks wants to get the detail in place so you can record what happened given you the income statement and being able to drill down on the source documents. And that means that if there was detail before the transactions that you pulled in, we've got to add that to the system generally. So let's go back on over and say our reconciliation. Let's go to the first tab, tab number one. 
and then we're gonna find the reconciling stuff which under the accountant view is under the bookkeeping and then reconcile down below if you were in the business view it would be under the accounting i believe on the left hand side and then reconcile second tab up top so then we're going to be in the reconcile and let's go ahead and get started match books to the bank records let's do it and then it gives you your thing here and i'll say maybe later on this one maybe later quickbooks not right now and then we're looking for the credit card so the credit card that's the one we want with the reconciliation and then the beginning balance notice the beginning balance is zero that's a problem because we need the beginning balance there so we could uh when you first enter the transactions you could try to put this into the beginning balance or we could just put it into the register as long as it's something that we can check off in the first in the first reconciliation then it'll be fine then the beginning balance will be good going forward so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go up top. I'm going to right click on the tab up top, duplicate it, and let's go into the register and add that beginning balance. Let's put it in place just manually into the register, going into the bookkeeping on the left-hand side to do so, into the chart of accounts. If you were in the other view, by the way, it would be under accounting and then the chart of accounts to get into that chart of accounts. Closing up the hand boogie, let's find that um, that uh, credit card, which is right there. I found it. I found it. And then we're gonna go into the register. This is not the check register. This is the credit card register. And we want it then to be, to be going up or having a, a charge, in this case, a charge for that beginning balance. I'm gonna hit the drop down right here and say, let's make that just like a normal, like an expense type of form. Let's, let's do it because that's the normal form to be used. And this is going to be, let's make it as of 090121. Now, oftentimes, if you were to start a new bookkeeping system, you would want to do it by the beginning of the year and possibly have your prior bookkeeping system in the prior year. Therefore, possibly in January, you would be running this. But this is just going to be an example problem uh, here. So we have a couple months that we'll, we're going to be dealing with. But note, that when you put your beginning balances in, generally you would like to put the beginning balances in in the prior period and or put them to equity so they're not going to be uh, hitting the income statement. So we won't get into that too detailed now. We're going to say memo, this is the beginning balance and it's going to be a charge of $1,000. Now the other side, where's the charge go to? Do I have to go to all my prior credit card statements and know where the charges were that were, were outstanding and whatnot and how much I paid and so forth? No, because we're going to basically assume that that's in the prior accounting system. And then and they, if they were going to be income accounts, they would have rolled into the equity account, the equity account of retained earnings. So I'm going to put this beginning balance directly into retained earnings at this point and just record the activity that is happen, happening in the current period. So I'm going to put it into retained earnings. It might give me a warning saying that's funny, that's unusual, that's weird. It is, but it's a beginning balance thing. That's why we're doing it. So we're gonna say save it, save it, and there we have it, it's been recorded. Let's go up to the second tab, balance sheet, and we can run it, run in, and scroll down and say what happened there. There we have it in the credit card. Credit card's positive now. That makes some sense. There's the $1,000, that looks good. The other side's in retained earnings. Retained earnings in the in the online version, you can't drill down on, annoying, but that's the way it is. You can still see the detail though by running a GL report, just to show you how that works. I'm gonna right click on the tab to the right, duplicate that tab. Let's find ourselves a GL report so we can see what's happening in the retained earnings. We can do that by going to the reports on the left hand side, and I'm gonna look for the general ledger. Give me that G to the L report. And then range change up top from 010121, 121, and run it. And then if I go down to the to the uh, the account of retained earnings, there it is, retained earnings. And we've got then 
than that amount that we just put into the retained earnings right here, the expense of the $1,000. So you can see the detail in the retained earnings by doing that. In the second reconciliation, we won't have to do that anymore. It's only gonna be needed on the first one to get that big beginning balance in place. Let's go back to the first tab and continue. So I don't see the beginning balance here, but that's okay because I can check it off once I start rolling in to the reconciliation. So this is 09, 09, uh, 09 30, uh, 21. I'm sorry, what am I doing here? Ending balance, that's what they're looking for, not the date. 75638, 75638, 756.38. That's what I meant. Now I put it in the wrong. 756.38. And then the date is going to be, are they going to make me use the date thing here? Let's bring it back. 930. Okay, I think I got it this time. I got it. Then we'll start the reconciliation. I know what I'm doing here. So we got the reconciling items up top. This is the statement ending balance. So you can see that on the statement here. So there's our ending balance there. And then we've got, we've got the beginning balance, which is zero, which normally, and will be in all following presentations, or all following reconciliations, the 1,000. But I'm still okay with that because I can check it off. So I can check it off down here for the first one and it's not gonna throw me out. It's not gonna, not gonna be a problem. I'll just check that one off. I'm gonna uncheck all these. Notice they were already checked off because I did this with the bank feeds. So it tried to help me out by just, if you just check the whole thing off and say, are you sure you want, uh, yes, yeah, select, select the whole thing. It's gonna generally be reconciled. Why? Because we took all this information directly from the financial institution. And now we're tying out what's in our books to what's in the financial institution. So unless the beginning balance was a problem, which it was this time, won't be going forward, or we somehow missed a transaction, deleted it, or didn't get imported, or we doubled up on a transaction, entered it two times, then we should be in balance. So it should be a really easy thing to do if we're being reliant kind of on the bank feeds to record this information. But uh, it, it could still get a little, little mixed up when you make the payments, like depending on how you make the payment. But in any case, let's uncheck that and do it one thing at a time. There's the 1000. So now that's kind of what the beginning balance will be in the following time, plus the charges minus the payments is going to give us the cleared balance. So once the this balance is equal to the cleared balance, that will mean that we have checked everything off. Uh, and anything that had not yet been checked off would then be the reconciling items. There aren't gonna be any things that aren't checked off here because we pulled all this information directly from the bank. We don't have anything like we would have on the bank statement or bank reconciliation of outstanding uh, checks and deposits. So it should be a pretty easy process to just reconcile. I'm gonna say, okay, we found that one and I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it yellow, highlight it. And then I've got the 366, the 36603. 36603 is right there. The 7245 and the 4996. And I'm just going to check those off. Check it, check it out and check it off. I've checked it out and now I'm checking it off because it all checks out. Roger that. So there we go. And then the end balance is the 75638. 75638, so we're in balance over here with your bank reconciliations. You wanna make sure that is zero. If it's not zero and it's like a dollar or something, you're like, that's not a big deal. You kinda of wanna get it to be zero. It should be able to get to be zero because you're not trying to check just the ending balance. You're trying to get checked that all the other transactions were correct. And if it's not zero, you could have a large you know, payment as well as a charge that kinda of nets out or multiple payments and charges that you're missing that happens to net out to a small amount but you're missing all the detail so that's basically it we're going to say let's let's go ahead and say finish it you could you could of course leave or some or something and then come back later but we're going to finish it now finish it done and so there we have that one let's do let's do one more on it uh let's do one more by the way before we do that though if you go to the history by account you could find then your your reconciliations by the credit card account 
and you could go in here and view the reconciliation, which is a kind of kind of intimidating looking report. But the reconciliation is really just this part down here, like this beginning balance, the statement balance, not quite right, but that's okay because it's the first one because we had to we had to tweak it a little bit on that first one because the beginning balance was not right, but we had to check it off. And then the, the really the starting point is this area here, the statement ending date, the 75638 versus the register balance, the 75638. There's no difference, so there's no reconciling items. And then it gives you more the detail of what actually happened and whatnot. But we're looking for the reconciling items. There are none because it's the same. So in other words, if I go to the balance sheet here on the credit card, it's going, it's saying it's 75638. And that's what's on the bank statement or the credit card statement, 75638. So it's good going forward. Let's do one more. This time, going to October, this is our mock October statement, which is going to start out at the 75638. And then we've got this charge down here, or a payment, one payment. That's all we did. That's all we did this time. So it'll be a really easy one. So let's go to the first tab, and let's do it again. Do it again. We could go into it this way. This is one way we can go into it. Bookkeeping, reconcile. Closing the burger, we're going into the credit card, credit card account. And this time the beginning balance, it's there for us and it will be there for us every time going forward. It's gonna be correct every time we don't have a beginning balance problem anymore. And this is gonna be as of 10321. Note that if I go to the balance sheet over here, we could change the date up top to 103021, the cutoff date, and run it run it and then down here we're at the the 63177 that's where we stand right now that's where i'm standing and if we look at our our statement balance for for october 63177 we're tied out because we created our financial statements directly from the bank feeds and so therefore there's no timing differences so reconciliation quite simple so we're going to go to the first tab and say I got I typed in the wrong thing again you got to type the ending balance first that's what they want the ending balance was 631.77 so it's 631 what is going on 631.77 QuickBooks is doing this on purpose trying to drive me crazy 1031 1031 that's the one Okay, let's go ahead and start it. And it should be as easy as this. We can say, okay, there's the beginning balance. And then notice it checked all of them off for us already. Why? Because we, we pulled this in from the uh, bank feeds. So it already checked it off. That's what the bank reconciliation, that's what the bank feeds do for us. And notice it does, for, it does that for us even if we weren't constructing the financial statements from the bank feeds. In other words, if I had entered this first and then used the bank feeds to check that I have entered it matching up to a transaction I had already input, then it would help us out with the reconciliation generally as well. It's not a perfect system because if something's out of balance, I'm going to have to re-reconcile the whole thing again. If it, it, but, you know, it could help us out with that. Now, if we could just check the whole thing off. And then we're going to be in balance because we constructed this whole thing from the bank feeds. So our ending balance should be tying out. We got a difference of zero and we could just say, finish it, finish it. And then done. And there's your, there's your process for the credit card bank reconciliations just for those two months uh, that we can, that we can take a look at it. We'll have similar issues with the reconciliation process for the checking account which again, will have that beginning balance problem with the first one. And then everything from that point will be easier as well. And if we're building our, our financial statements from directly the bank information, again, it'll be quite easy because we won't have any reconciling items. If we're doing some kind of accrual method, then we're going to have the reconciling items and, the, and that'll be a little bit more complex with regards to the bank statement and bank reconciliation.